Harold, by the way, would sometimes tell stories about that time when he had the company, and I remember him once telling me about how uh, everything, he, how everything he touched worked out, and he said even things that made no sense at all worked out, and uh, uh, they were not mathematical. He described how these Iraqi oil executives, uh, he had to take them out for dinner in Paris once, and uh, they got soused, and then he got soused, and he didn't make it back to the hotel. He went to the wrong building instead. He ended up uh, in the lobby, what he thought was the lobby of the hotel, was the lobby of IBM Paris, and he, you know, he was far enough... Uh, South that he, he ended up sleeping there. And he wakes up in the morning and he looks at IBM Paris and he sees in those days, computer time was pretty expensive uh, way back, and he sees IBM Paris is uh, selling computer time at pretty high price, higher than it sold in, in New York. And then he remembers that his friends, the Iraqi oil company, they own time on a cable across the Atlantic and they're not using much of it. Uh, so he asked them, he says, would you mind if I could borrow you know, some of the time on the on your cable across the Atlantic. And they said, sure, we're not using it anyway. Go ahead. We won't charge you for it. So he sets up a business in Paris. He buys computer time from IBM in New York on their computer, links it through this cable at IBM and this Iraqi cable time across the Atlantic, and sets up competition with IBM Europe for IBM time, time on IBM computers, wildly undercutting their price. And he said they couldn't figure out where he was getting computer time in Europe that was so cheap. All right, so uh, I think uh, my last planned speaker here uh, for the afternoon, uh, well, you, heard, you had the privilege of hearing before Peter Sonak, who is uh, a, not only a great mathematician, uh, a great friend of Harold's, was well, a great friend of Harold's, and, a, and we were privileged to have him twice as a colleague here, and uh, has been long a wonderful friend of many of us here and uh, has kindly said that in addition to his talk, he'll make a couple of remarks about Harold. As those of you who were here uh, saw, he, uh, Peter talked about work of Harold and how it helped inspire some current works of his and his collaborators. So we're glad to have Peter add. Uh, thanks. 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 Uh, since I've already spoken, I'll be brief. Let me start first with one story. When I first came here in 1980, he and I were the only number theorists uh, I was very young, but he was a senior number theorist in the department working in number theory. Uh, and we, of course, became very friendly very quickly. We had a lot of co common interests. But he said to me, you know, you should come up to my house. You should not be seen talking to me because I'm not in the in inner Kabbalah here or something. And you don't want to really be associated with me. So come to my house and we'll talk there. Of course, this was his sense of humor. Uh, certainly, uh, he got on with every, everybody. He would tell interesting stories. I went to his house, and he gave me this uh, book in 1983. I'll read you the inscription now. This is a book that he wrote that I've used many times. Uh, actually, today, one of my colleagues, Chris Skinner, a very well-known number theorist, said, uh, why I wasn't turning up for the seminar in Princeton today, I said, I'm going to a memorial for Harold Shapiro, and he said, Ah, did he write a textbook? I said, yes. He said, this guy is quite a bit younger. He was in high school in Arkansas, and the high school had two math books. And this is one of the books. And he learned number theory there, and he became a number theorist. And a very good one. He's a colleague of mine at Princeton. Uh, Harold Shapiro would always ask me, he, he liked exotic th aspects of number theory, as I was saying in the lecture, and he asked me, could I analytically continue the following function? Because he sort of sensed I had some interest in this. The sum of the discriminants to minus s of all number fields. He says, you can do that. This is a very hard problem, and I have nothing to say about it. But I, I, I would like to say that some progress was made on this by Manjul Bhargava and Akshay Venkatesh and Jordan Ellenberg. And I uh, regret, and, and in time for him to have appreciated it, but I never saw him recently. I think he would have like to see some progress on that problem. So, um, this book uh, he gave to me at his house on Tuesday, March 15, 1983, Dear Peter. So he had worked out that I used to be a chess fanatic. I was a chess professional as in high school doing nothing but chess and then discovered math. It was much, much greater. Uh, he obviously knew something about chess as you'll see. Chess is much like marriage. In chess, many checks may lead to a mate. On the, on the other hand, in marriage, one mate actually usually leads to many checks. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds like him. 
In any case, it's all number theory. Sincerely, Harold.